Hello everyone, this is Pastor Jordan again here, um, continuing on our study, uh, looking at the, the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis. Um, hopefully you've been able to catch up to, to watch all the other videos. Um, if not, you know, there's the other links are there on the, the YouTube site as well for you to click on, to, to look at, and to, to listen to, to, to glean from. But I'm glad that you're able to, to take time to watch this video this week. Um, again, love to do this in person, but I'm thankful for technology, that way we can still learn and grow together. And so, um, just again, as I say every time, you know, if there's anything you need, please feel free to reach out to me, to the church, uh, yorkarpchurch at gmail.com. Uh, anything we can do, we'd be glad to do, um, to help you, uh, to pray for you. Just please let us know. Um, but now as we can gather together in our own homes and, and look over this, this word of God together, uh, before we begin, though, let's go to him in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you again that you are the Lord, that you are the giver of life, that we can come to you in all things and find hope, find assurance, find comfort. And Father God, I pray now that as we seek to study your word today, Lord, may you open our hearts, open our minds to, to see your truth. May your spirit work in us, or that we would see you in it, um, see more of who you are, see what you have done, and see how we ought to live in our lives. Father God, may you bless this time. May you bless each one of us. And Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, our scripture passage today uh, comes from Genesis chapter 41. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 24. So uh, if you open your Bibles with me, uh, I've got it here on the screen as well. Uh, let's uh, look to God's word here. Genesis chapter 41, verses 1 through 24. After two whole years, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing by the Nile. And behold, there came up out of the Nile seven cows, attractive and plump, and they fed in the reed grass. And behold, seven other cows, ugly and thin, came up out of the Nile after them, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the Nile. And the ugly, thin cows ate up the seven attractive, plump cows. And Pharaoh awoke, and he fell asleep and dreamed a second time. And behold, seven ears of grain, plump and good, were growing on one stalk. And behold, after them sprouted seven ears, thin and blighted by the east wind. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven plump full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. So in the morning his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was none who could interpret them to Pharaoh. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, I remember my offenses today. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me and the chief baker in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, we dreamed on the same night, he and I, each having a dream with its own interpretation. A young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. When we told him, he interpreted our dreams to us, giving us an interpretation to each man according to his dream. And as he interpreted to us, so it came about. I was restored to my office, and the baker was hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they quickly brought him out of the pit. And when he had shaved himself and changed his clothes, he came in before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Joseph answered Pharaoh, It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream I was standing on the banks of the Nile. Seven cows, plump and attractive, came up out of the Nile and fed in the reed grass. Seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and thin, such as I have never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the thin, ugly cows ate up the first seven plump cows. And when they had eaten them, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were still as ugly as at the beginning. Then I awoke. I also saw in my dream seven ears growing on one stalk, full and good. Seven ears withered, thin, and blighted by the east wind sprouted after them. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven good ears. And I told it to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. God's word for God's people. Amen. Now, as we start our story here, we have to remember, uh, just kind of backtracking, Joseph has been sold into slavery. He has gone into Egypt. His things started working well when he was working for Potiphar, but Potiphar's wife accused him um, of adultery and, uh, and trying to sleep with her. And so because of that, he's been thrown into jail. Things start to look up again when the, the Pharaoh's chief baker and cupbearer are thrown in prison. Joseph interprets the dream and hoping that he would get out, but... They, he has forgotten yet again. And so we're told it has been two whole years since the events of chapter 40. After the, the, the cupbearer and the, the baker have left, Joseph has been still been stuck in prison for another two years, having been forgotten. 
but we see that there are other things going on even though he can't see them at the moment. You see, in this passage, we are introduced really to Pharaoh and are looking at Pharaoh's perspective here. And we're told after those two years that Pharaoh, um, he, he had a dream. And we're told that he was standing in the Nile River. And behold, up out of the river, uh, there, there came seven cows. These were good, fat calves, ones that you, know, if you, that you would want to have, um, that can give you a lot of milk, a lot of meat. Um, those worth, uh, worth keeping and being prized. And we're told that... Uh, these seven cows came up and they were eating, and but then after that, um, I'm told that ugly thin cows came up. Uh, seven more of them um, came up out of the Nile, and these cows they were they were emaciated. They were they were thin. You could probably see their ribs, as you can kind of see in the in the the slide here, and um, just looking very malnourished and something that you would not want to buy. <laughs> and we're told that these these seven cows um, ate. The seven good cows, the seven attractive cows, as it said. And even after they ate them, they still looked uh, thin and skin and bones. And we're told that after that, Pharaoh woke up. But then he had a second dream. And we're told in this dream um, that whenever he went to sleep, uh, he saw seven ears of grain. They were good, plump ears, uh, and uh, they were all growing on one stalk. And then after this... Um, I was told that there's seven more ears, um, thin, blighted um, by the east wind. Um, when you think about blight, it's a, you know, a disease that gets into plants that causes it to, uh, to wither and to end up dying and to be no good at all. And so but then these, these thin ears, are told, they were told that they swallow up the seven plump full ears. Um, kind of in the same manner that we look at the cows back in the first dream. Uh, and God does this intentionally to make the point. And, after seeing this, Pharaoh um, ends up waking up, and you could probably think about this a little bit easier. If you think about a tomato, uh, we might not think in terms of grain, but you know, you could think of a big, fat, juicy tomato um, that looks good. Well, that could represent maybe those those seven full um, ears, and then a really wrinkly, splotched, just really rotten-looking tomato, um, and that rotten tomato ends up swallowing up that good plump one, and so they're kind of a way to look at this dream here. And so we're told that Pharaoh is troubled by these dreams, and so what he does is he calls in all the magicians of Egypt, it says, all these, uh, these wise men, these, in, these, these interpreters, the guys that he would rely on. And so Pharaoh tells them his dreams, but none of them could interpret what exactly they meant. And you see how God is working here, because while this is all happening, this chief cupbearer, you remember, he says to Pharaoh that you know he, he remembers what he has done in the past and all this talk of dreams, it makes him remember Joseph. And he recounts to Pharaoh how you know, he and the baker dreamed the dreams, Joseph interpreted them, and sure enough, both uh, the interpretations came true. And so we find that the Pharaoh, he ends up call, sending and calling Joseph, and so Joseph is taken out of that pit that he has been sitting in for so long, and they shave him, uh, and they change his clothes, and they bring him in before Pharaoh. And so right here at the end uh, of this passage, we see Pharaoh recounting both of these dreams to Joseph. And at the very end of it, we see that, again, it's uh, repeated that none of the magicians uh, could explain anything to him. And we leave off here today with this. Um, you know, Next week, we'll look at Joseph's interpretation. Um, but the big thing here that we can see is how God is, is working his, his grand plan uh, for Joseph. And then that makes us think, you know, about us. Because you have to imagine for a moment, Joseph has been sitting in this prison for two years. He doesn't see what's going on here with the Pharaoh, um, but yet we see God is indeed at work. And this reminds us that you know there, there are going to be moments in our life, as we've talked about before, as we think about right now during this coronavirus, that we, we have no idea uh, what is going on. Um, Seeing things just don't seem to be adding up. We might, you know, be stuck at home, feel like we're stuck in, in prison. Um, you know, difficulty maybe continue to, to, to pile up for us, and we might just be wondering, you know, God, what are you doing? But this, this passage reminds us that even if we don't see it, we can know that God is at work. Joseph doesn't see what's going on with Pharaoh, but God is sending these dreams to Pharaoh uh, to make him question them. And we see how this ultimately gets us to the end of this passage we just talked about, where Joseph is now in the throne room of Pharaoh. 
And we see even though Joseph didn't understand why he was quite there at the beginning of it, we, we understand that God has been working. And for us, this, this encourages us that in those moments when we don't quite understand what is going on, we don't see it, we can know and trust that our God is working and that his plan is in action, as we've seen throughout this entire course of this lesson, of, of talking about Joseph, that although we might not understand what he is doing, we can trust that he is working things out. And so we can trust him and lean on him for, for comfort, for strength, um, even when we have no clue uh, what is transpiring around us. Now, there's another thing that I think sticks out in this, and I think this, this really makes us think about a lot more of life. You've got Pharaoh with these two dreams, and so he calls upon all of his magicians. But yet, none of these magicians can interpret these dreams. Um, and I don't think it's stretching to see, um, you know, how often we look to the world to try to answer our questions. Uh, we look to, to our sin to satisfy us, uh, to find, to find a feeling of contentment, to, uh, of understanding of what is going on. Um, but yet, just as Pharaoh looks to these worldly people, they fall short. And when we look to things other than the Lord, they will always fall short. You know, nothing can tell us why we are here other than God. You know, nothing can, can help us understand our purpose in life other than knowing the Lord. Because, as the Catechism says, you know, what is man's chief end? Man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. We try to find that in so many things in the world, but nothing makes sense. Nothing fits that, that God-shaped hole in our hearts other than God Himself. You know, in, in moments that we're, we're trying to find comfort, we're trying to find solace, we're trying to find uh, peace, uh, so, so often we look to things uh, of the flesh, things of the world, and they just they, they don't fill us up. But when we come to God... He does, and He always will. He can give us that, that peace that we need when we're grieving. He can give us that comfort when we're, we're unsure of what's going on. Uh, you know, we, we go to Him and to His Word for, for everything in our life, and we find the answers. We find that the reason why things are the way they are in the world is because of sin. We find the reason why we can't be perfect is because of our sin. And we see that we need a Savior. We see that we need Christ. The one to come and to die and to, to rise again so that by trusting and believing in Him that we will be forgiven. That His righteousness will be given to us in spite of our sinfulness. And so when we come to God's Word, we see that everything does make sense. Where, where we come from, where we're going. And we see quite clearly our need for Him in our lives. Just as He is working here with Joseph and Pharaoh, we see we can look to Him to work in our lives and to find stability, to find um, hope to find the answers that we need in life. It all comes back to God. And we find here that we're, the world comes short, these magicians come short. God is not. For he's about to send Joseph to Pharaoh to interpret the true meaning of these dreams. And so we can go to, we can go to his word to interpret our life, to, to understand our life, why we're here, what's our, what our purpose is, and our need for him, and how we are to live and honor him. And so then we see here one final lesson, too, is that God uses our words in his timing. Um, you think about the, this cupbearer here. Joseph had told him to remember him two years earlier and what he has done, but what happened? He forgot. But then in this moment, two years later, after hearing these dreams from the Pharaoh, the Lord brings the cupbearer's remembrance of Joseph. For his purposes, in this moment, God is going to use this remembrance so that Joseph be brought before Pharaoh, so that Joseph can interpret these dreams. And although two years have passed, God enabled this man to remember. And I think when this is an encouragement for us in our evangelism as we seek to share the gospel um, you know, so often we want to people to come to Jesus as we share the gospel. And I think there's nothing wrong with that at all. You know, we want people to understand their need for Christ, to see that they are sinners, to see that he is their only hope. And as we seek, we share the gospel, and, um, you know, as I, as I teach, as I preach, I mean, that, that's the goal, is to, to have people come to Jesus and then to see them grow. And I think it can be disheartening when we go, we get ready, we want them to see the truth, and, and it seems like the gospel just seems to fall on deaf ears. They don't listen to us. They 
seem to, to, to hate what we say. Um, and so it can be disheartening. But I think this reminds us that God works in His time. And there are going to be times in our life when those that we share the gospel with might not believe it immediately. But, you know, down the road, a year, 10 years, 15, 20 years, we don't know. God might bring to their remembrance what you have said to them about who Jesus is and their need for him. He might use something in their life to, to remind them of the gospel, what you said, as they open up his word to see to their need for him. And they, they might come to him years later, and you might not even know it. And so we have to remember, as God works in all of these ways in this story, there is encouragement for us in knowing that he will provide for us, even when we don't see it. Um, in knowing that we can look to him for, for the answers in life, for, for that comfort, for that peace that can only be found in him. And also to in encourage us you know, in how we share him. He's going to work in his time, in his people. And we can know that even when things seem to, to have fallen short and to not have worked, he can work in his time bringing people to him maybe later down the road and so that should encourage us to still go share that gospel and even if it seems like somebody's not listening we can you know, find hope that our God might bring their, our words to their remembrance one day and bring them to himself again I hope this was, a, was helpful for you again this week I look forward to being able to do Bible study again in person uh, whenever the Lord will allow us to do that um, but again if you need anything please feel free to reach out um, I love you guys praying for you guys but as we uh Wrap this up. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for all things. We thank you that you are in control, that you are the God that we can look to when things make no sense. Lord, and we're reminded that you do have a grand plan. Lord, for we can look to your word, look to the cross, and look to the hope that we have in Christ, that even in the, the most difficult moments, we can see your grand plan in action and trust in you and your sovereign grace. And so, Lord, may you continue to comfort each one of us in this time. May you continue to work in our lives, enable us to shine like a light for you to all those around us. Lord, may we see the story of Joseph as a blessing to us, reminding us to not give up hope, but to trust in you, the almighty and all-powerful God, who is in control of all things, guiding and directing us, that there we can look forward to that fateful day when we are with you forever. Bless us, guide us, and keep us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.